August 1945, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. In one flash, the world saw a weapon that could end civilization. For a brief moment, only one nation held that power. But just three years later, the silence of the Kazakh steppe was broken by another mushroom cloud. The Soviet Union had the bomb. How did they catch up so fast? Today, we will uncover how the U.S. E.C. obtained nuclear weapons, a story of fear, of spies, and of a desperate race against time. So before we begin, make sure to like the video and hit the subscribe button. It really helps the channel grow, and I appreciate every single one of you for tuning in. When the United States dropped atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the message was clear. Whoever had this weapon could shape the future of the world. Joseph Stalin understood the danger immediately. If the Soviet Union stayed behind, it would live under America's shadow. So he made a decision. Not later, not maybe, but now. The Soviet Union would build its own atomic bomb, whatever the cost. The Soviet Union had brilliant minds, physicists who understood the secrets of atoms and fission. Men like Igor Kurchatov and Yuli Karitan would soon become the leaders of the atomic program, but brilliance alone could not win a race that had already started. Years of war had destroyed much of the country's industry, political purges had eliminated some of the brightest minds, and the United States had a massive advantage, factories, research facilities, and a secret project that had already produced real bombs. The Soviets faced a monumental challenge. They had the brains, but not the machines. They lacked large-scale plutonium production, high-precision laboratories, and the infrastructure to build and test a working bomb. Every day that passed without progress increased the risk. Stalin knew that if the USSR fell behind, the balance of world power could shift permanently. The stakes were nothing less than survival. To succeed, the Soviets would have to build everything from scratch. Secret cities, massive factories, laboratories hidden from the world, and do it faster than anyone thought possible. It was an impossible task. But the race had begun. The Soviets faced a monumental problem. Brilliant minds, but few factories and time slipping away. They needed knowledge, fast. That knowledge came through a hidden highway of espionage. Soviet spies had penetrated the most secret corners of the Allied atomic programs. Inside these top secret laboratories, ordinary people became extraordinary. Some acted out of ideology, some out of fear, and others from a belief that no single nation should control such terrible power. Klaus Fuchs, a gifted physicist at Los Alamos, became the most important link. He passed blueprints, calculations, and detailed designs directly to Moscow. Every note, every formula, every diagram saved Soviet scientists months, even years, of experimentation. But Fuchs was not alone. Theodore Hall, one of the youngest scientists at Los Alamos, risked everything to send critical insights. Alan Nunn May, Harry Gold, and others formed a secret chain carrying America's most guarded atomic secrets behind the Iron Curtain. This espionage was a lifeline. It gave Soviet scientists a clear picture of the bomb's design, reactor operation, and plutonium handling, knowledge that might have taken years to develop independently, yet espionage could only take them so far. Blueprints could guide them, but they still faced the impossible, constructing massive plutonium reactors, shaping explosive lenses with extreme precision, and assembling the first Soviet atomic device, all under a veil of secrecy and immense pressure. Every stolen secret had to be turned into action, every diagram into a machine capable of destruction. The spies had given them the map, now the Soviets had to build the journey. Espionage gave the Soviets a blueprint, but blueprints alone could not build a bomb. Stalin understood this. To turn knowledge into power, the USSR had to mobilize the entire nation. Secret cities sprang up, places that did not exist on maps. Entire towns, with workers, laboratories, and factories, were hidden behind barbed wire and guarded gates. Chelyabinsk-40, now Ozersk, became the heart of plutonium production. Mayak, a sprawling complex in the Ural Mountains, transformed raw materials into the fuel for the bomb. The program was ruthless. Lavrenti Berry, head of the secret police, oversaw every detail, ensuring no leak, no mistake, no delay. Scientists like Igor Kurchatov worked tirelessly, often under immense pressure, racing against time to solve problems the world had never faced. Factories rose from nothing, reactors were built in record time, and entire communities worked in complete secrecy, unaware of the scale of the project they were part of. Every shipment, every calculation, every experiment was hidden, because failure or exposure could cost the USSR everything. It was a machine built on secrecy, discipline, and extraordinary human effort, a massive hidden project that would eventually change the balance of power in the world. Stolen blueprints gave the Soviets a head start, but blueprints alone could not build a bomb. 
Every design had to be adapted to the materials, tools, and conditions available in the USSR. Scientists like Kurchatov and his team faced countless technical challenges. Explosive lenses had to be shaped with extreme precision, reactors had to operate flawlessly, and plutonium, a deadly substance, had to be handled safely, often in experimental conditions that had never been tried before. A single miscalculation could destroy months of work or lives. This was more than copying, it was ingenuity under pressure. Soviet engineers studied, experimented, and sometimes improvised solutions that the Americans had not considered. They developed new techniques, solved unforeseen problems, and slowly turned theoretical knowledge into practical reality. The work was relentless. Long nights, endless calculations, and high-stakes experiments defined the pace. Every small success was a step closer to the bomb. Every failure was a lesson and sometimes a dangerous one. The balance was delicate. They had to follow the stolen designs closely enough to succeed, but also innovate to make the designs work with Soviet resources. This combination of copying and creativity transformed a map of knowledge into a living, breathing program of immense power. Step by step, experiment by experiment, they were turning knowledge into action and inching closer to the historic moment when the world would see the Soviet Union's first nuclear explosion. After years of secrecy, experimentation, and relentless ingenuity, the moment of truth arrived. On August 29, 1949, in the remote Kazakh steppe at Semipalatinsk, the Soviet Union conducted its first atomic bomb test, RDS-1. The blast lit the sky, sending a mushroom cloud soaring into the heavens. The ground shook for miles and a powerful shockwave rippled across the steppe. For the scientists who had spent countless sleepless nights in hidden laboratories, it was a mixture of triumph, relief, and disbelief. Across the world, the reaction was immediate. U.S. intelligence, monitoring seismic activity and radiation, realized the unthinkable. Their atomic monopoly was over. The United States, once the sole keeper of the world's most terrible weapon, now faced a peer capable of leveling cities. The test marked the beginning of a new era, the nuclear age, defined by tension, fear, and the shadow of mutually assured destruction. For the Soviet Union, it was a victory of science, secrecy, and human determination. They had taken stolen knowledge, adapted it with ingenuity, and transformed it into a weapon that could alter the course of global history forever. From this day forward, no nation could claim absolute power, and the balance of the world had shifted irreversibly. The Soviet Union had succeeded, but one question has fascinated historians for decades. How much did espionage actually contribute to their success? Some argue that spies like Klaus Fuchs were decisive. The blueprints, calculations, and design secrets they provided shortened the path to the bomb by years. Without them, the Soviets might have taken much longer or faced far more failures. Others insist that espionage was only part of the story. The real achievement lay in the Soviet scientists and engineers, in their creativity, problem-solving, and ability to turn incomplete information into a working weapon. They built massive factories, ran complex reactors, and solved challenges that blueprints alone could not explain. The truth lies somewhere in between. Spies provided a shortcut, but it was the combination of stolen knowledge knowledge, relentless human effort, and Soviet ingenuity that created the RDS-1. One without the other might never have worked. In the end, espionage opened the door, but the Soviets walked through it with skill and determination. Behind the secrecy, the experiments, and the triumph, there was a human cost that cannot be ignored. Workers in closed cities labored under extreme conditions, often unaware of the dangers of plutonium and radiation. Nearby communities were exposed to fallout, sometimes for decades, with illnesses and environmental damage as a lasting legacy. The pursuit of power came at the price of lives, health, and freedom. Even the scientists and leaders carried the weight of their actions. They had helped create a weapon capable of destroying entire cities, and the moral burden of that knowledge was theirs alone to bear. The story of the Soviet atomic bomb is not just one of espionage, ingenuity, and industrial might. It is also a story of human sacrifice and the shadow of moral responsibility that looms over the nuclear age. The Soviet Union's journey to the atomic bomb was not a single act of espionage nor a simple application of stolen knowledge. It was fear meeting science, secrecy meeting industry, and human determination meeting impossible challenges. From the stolen secrets of spies to the ingenuity of brilliant minds, and from secret cities to mushroom clouds in the steppe, this story reminds us that power has a cost, and the balance of the world was forever changed. We want to hear from you. What do you think was the most critical factor in the Soviets obtaining nuclear weapons, espionage, scientific ingenuity, or the industrial effort? Share your thoughts and comments. And thanks for watching. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to hit subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss any of our videos.